the people of God said, Amen. Come on, put those hands together, bless and praise. Oh, God. Thank God for this wonderful music ministry. Thank you so much for blessing us today. To all of our preachers, officers, and deacons, to our beloved mothers, and to you, our sisters and brothers, I want to say to you, Happy Resurrection Day. If you're able to stand, please stand for the reading, reverence, and respect for the Word of God. 2 Kings chapter 11, verses 1 through 12. But for the sake of time, I just want us to read verses 1, 2, and 3 responsively. And when Atali, the mother of Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead, she rose and destroyed all the seed roll. Together. And he will bring her into the house of the Lord to the Jews, and the Hananah will be the house of the Lord in all Amen. God bless you. I want to take the text with the subject Who will save our children? Who will save our children? And just in case you came for. Uh, Easter message. There is a messianic message even in this text. Someone must advocate for our young. Someone must stand and defend and champion their cause. Many instances, they are the most weak and vulnerable in our world. That's why scripture declare, take care of widows. Take care of, look out for strangers. But then remember orphans and children. Our children are living in a world in which they are raising themselves with, with no guidance, no direction, no wisdom. And it's not enough just to invest in them financially. I know most of us will suggest that I want them to have what I didn't have but we failed to give them what we did have. And sometimes it's not about the money you spend, but the time, the tenderness, and the teaching. It goes a long way just spending time. It ain't about tennis shoes or the PlayStation. Just spend some time and show some tenderness. And in the midst of that, do some teaching. Because scripture declares that as you walk along the way, teach them as they lay down at night, teach them. Sunday school teachers shouldn't be your child's first teacher. School should not be your first child's teacher. But you should be the first teacher 
one that will advocate education, discipline, and manners. Our text brings us to an outstanding saint by the name of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat. And her priestly husband, Jehoda. Jehoshaphat makes this brave attempt to cover this child by the name of Joab. Ataliah is queen because Haziah has been killed. He's dead. And instead of her allowing Joab to be the next king, she decides she's going to be queen. This is the first queen Anybody need a trivia question to impress your co-workers tomorrow? Ask them who was the only queen of Israel. This queen by the name of Atalai. With her selfish motives and her selfish endeavor, she decided to kill the whole royal seed of David. Please stay with me, y'all, because I told you there is a messianic message here. She wants to destroy the seed of David. You Bible readers know that Jesus come from the seed of David. So if this line is broken, all prophecy is destroyed. But this woman by the name of Joe Hosep decides to protect this child. She decides to go against the law and government of her day and cover this child and not allow this child to be destroyed. And I wish I had a parent or a grandparent Maybe I got an uncle or an aunt in the house who have declared and decreed that this child will not be destroyed. That I'm going to do all that is within me to save this child. The world will not have this one. Satan, you might as well take your hands off this one. I'm going to pray until heaven gets the news. I'm going to lay hands until heaven gets the news. I know I don't care how crazy they get. They may not listen to me, but I know there's one they will listen to. And I will pray until God moves. I will not let the world have my child. I'm looking for about three more with a ride with me here. I believe it's some old Jehoshaphat in here who understand what it means not to give your children to the world. Not to have Satan to disrupt them and corrupt them. Know what it means not to give up on a child. I want to encourage some mother or some father in here. Don't give up on your child. Keep them before the altar. Keep them before God. Even when it look like they are going contrary to the ways and will of God. Keep them lifted up. Don't give up because we serve a God who's able. And if the truth be told, I'm looking at a few of you who were the black sheep of your family. I'm looking at a few of you 
who was said most likely not to succeed. I'm looking at a few of you that people told you you wouldn't amount to anything, but aren't you glad they didn't have the last word? They gave the benediction over your life, but they didn't know you serve a God who can change things, situations, and circumstances. Couple of things here and I'll get out of your way. That this bad sister and this bad brother did for this baby. The first thing we see is that they covered him. Look in verse 2. They hid him. They covered him. This story reminds us of Moses. Y'all remember when Pharaoh wanted to kill all the male children under the age of three. And Moses' mother said, the devil can't have my baby. She hid him out as long as she could. When it got to a point where she couldn't hide him anymore. She built an ark and put him in the Nile River. And by the grace of God, God's hands on that ark. The other babies were being drowned in the Nile. But she places him in the Nile. God has his hands on the ark. And it lands in Pharaoh's backyard. Pharaoh's daughter sees this baby who cries at the right time. She gets the baby. She sees the baby. She tells Pharaoh, we got to keep this one. Said, do you know of a Hebrew woman that can nurse this baby? Boy, I'm getting happy just telling this story. His sister, Sepoya, had been spying out. She overheard. She said, oh, we... I know somebody who can nurse this baby. She said, go get him. Can't you see Zaporia running to the house? Saying, mama, mama, you won't believe what happened today. They get Moses' mother, bring her back to the palace. And look how bad God is. Moses' mama get paid to take care of her own child. I want to tell you, God moves in mysterious ways. But then this is also another story. It reminds us of, y'all remember Mary and Joseph? Mary and Joseph, they have Jesus. King Herod want to kill Jesus. He knew about the word and he knew about prophecy and he sends the wise men to go find the baby and he lies and say, when you find them, let me know so I can come back and worship. But they went another way. Because whenever you meet Jesus, you go another way. You you know when you come to worship and you lead the same way, that means you ain't met him. That that means you ain't ran into him. But when you come one way and leave another way, because it's impossible to be in the presence of the Lord, and stay the same way. I wish I had a witness. Here. And so they hid Jesus out in Africa. Had him to hide out in Egypt. And I don't mean to bother you ethnically, but if he's hiding out in Egypt, Got to mean he's a man of 
color. Because if I'm going to hide out somewhere, I'm going to hide somewhere where I'll blend in. So, so they, they covered Moses. They covered Jesus, but here they're covering joy. They are protecting him. They are shielding him. They are not giving him over to the authorities. They are not giving him over and yielding to the government. But not only do they cover him, but I want to make a verb that, that is normally a noun here. I want to say they churched him. Now I'm going to miss a couple of y'all here. But it's right here in verse 3. I, I, I got to read it because y'all going to miss it. And he was with her hid in the house of the Lord six years. They hid him. At the temple. Now I know this is controversial in some regard because some of your hurt and pain came from the church. Now don't label it all church hurt. Because church didn't hurt you. Deacon Jones hurt you. Reverend Johnson hurt you. It wasn't so much the church, but I understand people's hurt and pain and the dilemma of church. But I will say as a person who grew up in church, I love church. Everything it is and everything it is not. I still love my black church. It saved me being reared in the church. And I know we don't have many young people as we used to. Well, we were forced to go to Sunday school. I got some folks in here who know something about being reared in church. We knew the Bible story. We understood what it means when people would praise God and shout. We knew the songs of the church. We were reared in church. And it saved us. I can speak for myself. It saved me. I said, if it wasn't for the church, y'all would have another fool on the street. If it wasn't for the church, you'll have another one breaking in your houses and, and stealing your cars. If it wasn't for the church that saved me. And if you really believe in what you are doing here this morning, you don't want it just for you. You want it for the people you love. That are, that, that's speaking to those who are convinced that Jesus is Lord. Those of us who are convinced that the word of God can save. Those of us who are convinced that he is the way, the truth, and the life. Now, now, if you're not convinced, I can understand. You coming and leaving children behind. You're not totally convinced, I can understand. You asking them, do you want to come? They're going to always give the wrong answer. But Monday, you don't ask them, do they want to go? Come on, talk to me here. But if you are convinced in what we're doing, you will church them. Bring them up. In the house of the Lord. 
Something about being brought up in the house of the Lord. I know I need to move here. But I'm glad they taught me some things that my education didn't teach me. They taught me when it get hard. And when you couldn't find your way. I knew where to go, y'all. I knew where my help come from. Even when I strayed away, I still knew who God was. And I was undercover in high school. I didn't let folks know. I went to church. I didn't let folks know that I was a preacher kid. I was incognito for the most part. But I remember one Christmas program. Our high school choir was singing church songs. Right there in the auditorium, tears started flowing down my eyes. My classmates were nudging one another. I could hear them say, what's wrong with hosts? But they didn't know I was real. Brought up in church. I knew the good news of Jesus Christ. I knew what my Savior had done for me. And I'm here to tell you, when you know it, you can't keep it to yourself. When it's in you, whatever's in you, will come out. Won't it show up? Where my folks at? Who said I said I wasn't going to tell nobody. But I just couldn't keep it to myself. Oh, bless his name. Not only did they cover him, not only did they church him, but let me cut across the field here, y'all. They confirmed him. Jehoshadiah, he calls the company in when he got seven years old and says, here he is. The next king. That's verse 4, y'all. Here he is, y'all. Now bear in mind, the king has not been crowned. But they are confirming he's the king. Listen, parents, grandparents, uncles and aunts. Don't wait until they graduate. To tell them you're proud of them. Don't wait until they have accomplished. To say you approve of them. Go on and confirm them. While they're in kindergarten. First grade. Second grade. Tell them they're already somebody. Tell them they're already special. Tell them who they are in Jesus Christ. Tell them they're on their way to being something and will be something. And whatever they do, you're going to be proud of. Don't wait until they accomplish. Go ahead and confirm them. Right now. Even if they're going contrary, go ahead and confirm them. And let them know who they should be. And who they ought to be. And who God has made them to be. Remind them they've been made in the image and likeness of God. Remind them that they are beautiful and wonderfully made. 
There anybody in here know that the devil works on our young people. They need affirmation from their own homes who will say, girl, I'm proud of you. Boy, I really appreciate it. Don't wait until they get the job. Tell them before they get the job that you're already proud. And you're already pleased with their life. Give them affirmation even before the crime. Go ahead and affirm them. Sometimes your affirming is not who they are, but who they will be. And who they will become. Well, let me leave you. Not only was he covered. Not only was he churched. Not only was he confirmed. But then lastly, verse 5 through 8. He's cared for. The high priest gets guards to stay with him, to pr protect him, to bless his going out and his coming in, to watch the temple and to watch the palace. To give him security. And to let him know he's cared for. And to let him know he is protected. Because the church at its best is a church of community. You remember when the community used to raise children. Back in the 70s, they build houses with big porches. Porches was the emphasis. Because people sat on the porch. But around the 80s, they started moving to patio and fenced in. Well, people will spend time now in the backyard. But in the 70s, you had folks on the porch. And they would watch not only their children, they would watch your children. And anybody grown could tell you something. And they have worried about mama coming down there fighting you because you said something to their child. They understood what it means as an African proverb that suggests it takes a village to raise a child. So that child going to need more than mom and dad. Going to need some good grandparents. Gonna need some good uncles and aunts. Gonna need some good neighbors to keep an eye on them. Cause if truth be told, all of our children can act contrary outside of our presence. Oh yes it can. Even your child can act a little contrary Outside of your presence. But when you got a community that will watch over, when you got a community that is caring for our young people and will be there for them, I want to tell you it goes a long way. I want to tell you we got to protect them because they just might be our next president. They just might be our next Supreme Court justice. Might be our next pastor and spiritual leader. 
Might be our next civil right activist. Might just be our next doctor that cures COVID-19. Lupus and cancer. Our young people might be the next scientist that helps with global warming. And so we must advocate and stand with them and for them. We must be like this brother and sister who understand divine destiny is at stake. But what I love about divine destiny that although the enemy tries to destroy what God has sanctioned and ordained will come to pass. What God has in his divine destiny and in his prophecy. Although the enemy may try to stop, God's will will be done. As God covered this child, so he covered Jesus. Can we go on to the cross here? The Lord allowed Jesus to come through 42 generations. Allowed him to be born of a virgin. Allowed him to go and teach in Jerusalem. Samaria, Judea, and Galilee. But one Friday, he was arrested, tried, and convicted. And they put him on the cross. Y'all do know this is Resurrection Sunday. And he died. Didn't he die? I thought I was in a black Baptist church. Didn't it die? Die until the earth shake and rock like a drunken man. Die until the sun refused the sun. Die until the earth was covered in darkness. Die until the Syrian soldier said, Surely, 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 this must be the Son of God. But early, y'all gonna help me. Early, 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 before daybreak. Early before the dew got on the grass. Early before the rooster crowed. Early before breakfast was fixed. He got up. Didn't he do it? Didn't he get up with all power in his hand? Is there anybody glad? He got up, he got up, so you and I can face our tomorrow. I don't care what's going on, because he lives. I, 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 I can face my tomorrow, I'm glad. He got up. Is there anybody can give him a strong praise? Because one of these days I'm gonna have to lay this body down. But I know because he he lived and because he got up those skin worms. Destroy my body one of these days. I shall 
see God is there anybody who can give him a mighty praise come on new hope if you can't praise him for nothing else you ought to help me praise him for salvation praise him for sanctification praise him for justification praise him that one sun one glad morning when this life is over I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I where my saved folks, where my folks who are saved and don't care, who know it, I need about 20 of y'all who's already been to the water, already been baptized, already filled with the Holy Ghost, been washed in the blood of the lamb come on help me give him praise yeah 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 I I I I I I I know the blood still works the blood that reaches to the highest mountain and flow to the lowest valley where my blood folk who've been bought by the blood well if you've been redeemed you are a royal priesthood a chosen generation a holy nation a peculiar people who has been brought out of darkness to show forth the praises of him who brought you out of darkness into the marvelous light. If there's a praise in you, you ought to let it out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, he got up, didn't he get up, he got up, yes he did, up, 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 didn't he get up, the grave is empty, ain't that good news, Muhammad still in the grave, Buddha still in the grave, but Jesus, 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 the tomb is in. Come on, bless. Come on, bless. Praise his holy name. Stand all over the house. We extend the invitation. Who will? Who will save our children? That child just might be the next savior of the world. Who will save our children? That young girl. That young boy. Could be our deliverer. Thank God for mothers and fathers who will say to your children, I cover you. I cover you in prayer. 
I'll church you. I will confirm you. And I care for you. Because that child might be your deliverer. That might be the one that take care of you when you can't take care of yourself. Come on, talk to me here. We extend the invitation. We invite you to come. If you're here out of church, don't let this chance, don't let this moment pass you by. I know traditionally we try to do things on this day and we should. It's a significant day in the life of believers. The Lord is touching your heart now. I would that you would come meet us at this altar. Just as this boy was church six years hiding in the temple. No doubt learning the ways of God. No doubt having respect for the ordinance of God. They covered him in church. Church is not a perfect place. 